Are they good? Oh, sorry. I just, uh, I just muted. And if someone was going to ask a, a question there, I heard a voice and. Uh... Yes. Yeah, yeah. I was just wondering when they start the um, classes, the group classes, are they, they're still doing the virtual. I don't they're know. Still, yes, there's, there's still going to be a virtual schedule. They will have taken some things off. Um, but uh, I think that schedule should, should be out now or shortly. There was an email that came out Friday. I'm not, I don't, I didn't check the, the schedule, but uh, like I have a couple of classes that I was teaching online. I'll still be teaching those. Okay. Um, yeah. And then you're teaching one. I signed up for one in person. I think it's a spin yoga class. Yeah. Wednesday evenings at six o'clock. There's going to be the yeah. combination spin and flow yoga on the yeah. deck, which is exciting. And then, um, uh, yeah, the only other thing I'm teaching in person right now is a Saturday morning, eight o'clock spin class. So right. yoga is still online. And uh, thanks for coming in this morning. And so we'll, I'll just let you know, since I've started the recording, not just me being recorded. Um, uh, you can use whatever props that you like for this class. It's a, a yoga flow. So all levels, you feel like uh, just... <laughs> lying down and stepping out of something that's totally fine. I use a, I find using a blanket or a towel on my mat for my knees is good. And then I can, there's a few more restorative poses that we'll do near the end. And the blanket is fine just to fold up or wrap up to sit on or put underneath our, our shoulders. Anything else that you like? I've got, I don't have blocks here. So I use, sometimes I'll stack up some books and, and put those up near the front of my mat so that my arms can get a little longer at times. It's totally up to you. However, um, yeah, thanks for, for taking the time to come out. We're all going through this big transition of, of reopening and, and not sure how everybody's gonna do differently with that or what's gonna happen. And so <clears throat> we're reconnecting with each other and we want to make sure that we also stay con connected with our own inner experience. So maybe in your practice this morning, um, that idea might come to mind when you have a chance in transitions, just to kind of, oh, I'm, I'm here, breath is here, sound is here, sensations in the body, try to just check in with your own interior experience even as we appreciate that we can all be together to do this uh and of course that'll be more so coming in person but here we are so uh let's start in the child's pose and if if you don't feel like being in uh on your knees right away because we will be here for a few minutes then for sure you can take another posture that's the great thing about being uh at home is Nobody needs to see what you're doing, not that it matters, but uh, if you prefer to sit or lie down. Otherwise, just take the knees comfortably wide and start to bring the hips back. You might put the, if you use blocks or if you have books and you want something underneath the forehead, if you feel like you're up too high here. You can let your elbows just be soft on the floor and maybe your forehead rests palm on palm or However, it's comfortable for you to be here. Just so that you can land and to actually come to a stop. That's it, that's all. We've, we've come, all come from somewhere else and there'll be an agenda for the day. But for now, we're just here and we're pausing just to take in and make that connection with your physical structure, with your body, your bones, with whatever sensations are presenting themselves right now. And if there's uh, any pain, then certainly adjusting. Maybe you move your hips a little bit higher or you go ahead and just be resting on your back. Just wanna be able to Take a look at the interior experience that's going to include feelings of the breath, 
and other body sensations, the awareness of sensations of the shins pressing or just the overall weight and shape of the body in this posture. Anything that's in the sensory realm, anything that you can notice is just a, a nice reminder that, that you are here. So sounds in your space, the field of hearing, shapes and colors that may be coming across the eyelids, whether the eyes are open or closed, just seeing what's there. Also noticing the stream of consciousness, the thoughts that are coming and going. And sometimes some loud emotional tones that may be present from leftovers of last night or where you're coming from. Start to have a, a bit of softness and friendliness to be open to all of that since it is here. Allowing the breath to hold the attention. Even just one full breath cycle is a radical act of sanity, just to let your attention rest on that, the expansion of your rib cage and the softening of the belly. If there's an intention that you have or if something is coming that lets you know what you might need this morning. If you're tired, just let yourself feel tired. If there's a lot of agitation and you need to burn off some steam, then you can be with that. Let's start to just lift the hips up a little bit so you can walk your hands over towards the left. Start to lift up the right side of the rib cage and draw the hips back and over towards the right. Pull back gently through the right palm, pressing and hugging the upper right arm bone into socket a little bit there so you can get the fullness of the stretch in the rib cage, right side. And then shift forward through a table, walk the hands through center. You can watch your hands as they go, appreciating these parts of your body that do so much. And then sit your hips over towards the left. Keep a little bit of core lift as you do that. Leaning to the left, hips higher or sitting all the way back towards the heels and pull energetically back through the left palm. You can push a little forward through the right palm. Expanding the left side of the rib cage and taking one more full breath cycle there. Good, come through center. Let's come into a tabletop shape and let the shoulder blades start to move together. Press the inner palm and take it into a cow shape. Tailbone lifts and then tailbone starts to drop and the rest of the spine follows, pressing away from the palms, chin to chest. Let's do a few of these to connect with the breath. The inhale draws the heart forward. And the exhale lifts the belly. Just like that, you can keep the hips over top of the knees and the shoulders over the wrists or you can be shifting with a little bigger movements forward and back. And then let's spin the fingers away from each other. They can be coming out to the sides or maybe a little bit more towards a three quarter turn. Shifting side to side and forward and back so you feel some stretch in the inner wrists. Different positions with the hands. So just change it up here and spin the fingers to face in towards each other. 
And then try that moving forward and back and little circles with the hips. Press right out to the fingertips. Let's curl the toes under. Let's take the fingers away from each other again. And if you can turn a little more, the fingers can be right beside your knees, kind of out is a little less intense, or you can have the, the wrists further forward. So you're more in that tabletop shape. Soft bend at the elbows. Wherever you're at, we'll slowly start to sit back towards the heels and peel the base of the palms up and wiggle the thumbs. Gradually, the whole palm and then the fingers really slowly as you come up and bring the hands together and do a few noodles here, figure eights. You can sit right back on your heels if that's okay to stretch the bottoms of the feet or you can take it to a higher kneeling place, just a little less intense. And let's reach the arms up. And clasp the hands above your head and just press up there. Press up through the palms, squeeze the shoulder blades together. As you exhale, press the palms forward and come into that cat flexion of the spine. And then lift up on the inhale, squeeze the shoulder blades, so a little more of your cow shape. Again, you can stand up taller and then press the palms forward one more time, exhale. Inhale to lift. Good. And this time come all the way up if you're not. Release the hands around a couple of big circles with both arms. Tracing out forward sides and back within your range of movement. Hands can come to make fists at the low back and squeeze the elbows in towards each other. We'll lean a little bit into the left foot and step up with the right foot. And then we'll sit into the lunge. We can take the hands just to that front thigh for support. Staying with some of that openness across the collarbones that we've just created. And then on the exhale, draw the belly in and lift back more of a right angle. Let's sit low on the inhale. And then draw it in on the exhale. You can look down and find some of the uh, core strength there and the stretch for the left hip flexor. One more time, let's sit low. And this time we might release the arms and let them just float up. They can be uh, shoulder width or you can go for something that's broader and more expressive. The shoulders might be tight. Let's take two breaths here, taking some time to be with yourself in this posture. That's one. And two. Let's bring the hands down on either side of the front foot now and pick up the back knee. So a low lunge, pressing into the palms. And we're gonna just try to hover that right foot a little bit. You can hug the heel in towards your seat so it's a three-legged plank. And then step the foot back for plank pose with the knees lifted. One breath there. Let's tap the knees down and lower, narrowing the elbows onto the ground. Walk the legs back a little bit, press the tops of the feet and take the hands wide, lifting the elbows. Roll a marble forward with the nose, extending the chest any amount into gecko pose and then exhale lower. Inhaling, roll it forward, length from tailbone to crown of the head, and exhale, lower. Inhale, last one, and exhale. Let's slide the hands back, up through table, and let's come back into that child's pose, just as we did at the beginning. Come up on the fingertips and stretch out the backs of the wrists this time, and we'll just take three breaths there. That's one. Two and three, shifting forward to the table shape. Let's take the right arm and open it up to the side. You can let your hips really swing to the right. And then take the right fingers and draw them forward and then underneath yourself, but back towards your left foot on that diagonal. So forward on a diagonal to open, swing your hips to the right. 
and then reach and wrap under and reach back towards the left outer heel or the left side of your room. One more time, breathing in. And then this time come across and down and pause there for two breath cycles, crawling the left fingers forward or just pressing them in to the floor beside the face. One more breath. Exhaling, press the left palm and come back up to table. Second side, so left arm open, swing the hips to the left. So just exaggerate that. And then reach forward and under and down towards the outer right foot or right corner of your room. Open up, inhale. And exhale, hug the belly in and reach back on that diagonal. Once more, inhale. Swing the hips left and exhale, come under and just pause there on your left shoulder, positioning your right arm forward or press the palm beside your face and two breaths there. Noticing what it is to just be here in the pose. Press the right palm and come back up into the table, squeeze the shoulder blades together, inhale. And exhale, curl it into cat. Let's curl the toes under again and start to sit back towards the heels. Coming up either to the kneeling squat or come up to the higher kneeling position. Let's reach the arms up again on the inhale. And press the palms up towards the ceiling. Exhale. Take another breath in there, squeeze shoulder blade. And then press the palms forward, looking down. Lift up, inhale into that cow shape and then exhale into the cat. Let's lift it all the way up this time, inhale. And release the arms. You can bring the fist to the low back again to help the tailbone drop. Or you can clasp your hands behind the lower back and we're gonna shift our weight over towards the right shin, stepping the left foot up. Just finding balance there, no rush. And then sitting low, so feel that, and then coming back. If you prefer, you can take your hands to that front thigh for support. Just moving in and out of the depth of the stretch for your right hip flexor psoas, and staying with some expanse across the collarbone. Let's sit into the pose now and release the arms to let them float up and choose your your arm position you could even just come to prayer. If you feel the breath is getting away from you, we're just warming up. Last inhale. Exhale, bring your hands down, pick up the back knee, lean some weight into the palms, and then we'll try to lift up the left foot without the hips too much and squeeze that heel to the bum, three-legged plank. And then step it into plank pose for a breath. And then tap the knees, exhale, lower all the way down, narrow the elbows. Cobra, fingertips are in line with the shoulders or you can do the wider shape for tighter shoulders. And do three more of those movements of the spine. So good for the thoracic spine. We'll slide the hands back on the exhale and press back through table. And this time, curl the toes under, first downward facing dog. Deep bend of the knees, pressing the inner palms, heels quite lifted. Lengthening the spine, finding the core strength. Just playing around here to straighten one leg and let the opposite knees keep a deep knee bend. And then go the other side. Take a couple of walks out like that. Mm. Let's have the um, feet come a little bit closer together now and shift both heels over towards the right. So you can drop the heels any amount, they might not. Let's see if you can locate something interesting in the outer left hamstring and the IT band. As you breathe here, the hip maybe. 
and then come high on the tiptoes, lift the heels, and then start to shift the heels towards the left. Maybe drop, press away from the palms or push the floor forward, outer right. And back through center, inhale. And then high on the tiptoes. Let's take your time walking up towards the front. Bend the knees as needed. Come up halfway for a moment. Take a few loops of the shoulders. So a bit of core strength just to keep the spine uh, parallel with the floor, pelvis in more neutral. And press away from the shins and lift the toes. Find the feet. Feeling the balance of effort and a little bit of ease. Keep the jaw soft. One more breath there. And then fold over the legs, exhale. Let's do a ragdoll, slowly bend the knees and start to make your way up. A few breaths to bring yourself up. Giving some attention to the spine. These familiar movements that we can take for granted what the spine can do. Let's circle the shoulders out a couple of times. And then reach the arms up. Let's float the arms up. So it's a little less core if we open up the arms. More if we keep the arms straight as we come forward, just going through a couple half sun salutations. So if your low back feels like it's giving out, then the arms wide is where you want to be. Halfway lift on the inhale. Exhale, fold. Same thing when you come back up, either arms wide or just reach the arms forward. So just a little bit different, the work. Exhale, palms press. Try both ways. Reach the arms up. Exhale, come forward, lifting the pelvic floor and the belly. Come up halfway, lengthen, and fold, exhale. Press into the feet, come up, inhale, and exhale. So let's start to move through some lunges, reaching the arms up, and fold, exhale. Halfway, lengthen. Exhale, fold, the left leg will come back and we'll tap the left knee down. Let's reach both arms up on the inhale and exhale, bring the hands forward. Pick up the back knee, press into the palms and we'll set to plank. We'll shift through, tap the knees and on the exhale, lower. And then you choose your back bend into Cobra or Gecko or Upward Facing Dog. Kneecaps lift. Exhale through table, curl toes under, Downward Facing Dog. And we'll just take one full breath cycle there. Deep breath in and out. We'll reach the right leg up for three-legged dog. And bring the right knee towards the chest, lifting the heel and looking forward of your hands. And stepping the right foot up, just light on fingertips. This is where you might use your books or blocks. We're going to push off the back knee or back uh, foot a little momentum and step that foot up to the front. And fold over the legs. The breath in brings you halfway. Exhale to empty and fold. Press the feet, come all the way up, inhale. And exhale to trace the thumbs back to meet at the heart center, feeling your breath here for a full breath cycle. Embodied energy, reach the arms. Breathing in, exhale, fold. Halfway lengthen. Exhale, this time the right foot steps back. We're just doing the other side. Take a breath there in the low lunge, inhale. Tap the back knee, exhale. Arms float up, inhale. Exhale, hands come back down. Palms press, back knee lifts. We're stepping to plank. Shifting forward, take a breath there. Tap knees, lower all the way. Narrow elbows. Inhale your back bend. Exhale lower. Press through table. 
Child's pose or downward facing dog. So these postures are interchangeable. One full breath cycle. Left leg extends, left knee to nose, heel lifts looking forward. Stepping the left foot up and finding your low lunge there for a breath. Pushing off the back foot, rocking forward to fold over the legs and come up halfway, inhale. And fold, exhale. Press the feet, come all the way up, take a breath. And exhale here. Regrouping. And we'll move into Surya Namaskar B. So we'll start by just finding our chair, the depth of our chair. Feet can be hips distance apart or you can have your big toes together. Imagining that there is something there to support the sits bones, roll the inner thighs out. Hands can meet at the heart again or float forward. Palms towards the ceiling for three. Two, feeling some heat and one, fold over the legs, come up halfway. Exhale, let it go. And step to plank again, just notice which foot steps back first. And shift through, or you can just do a couple of cat and cow, all levels, lower to the ground. Open the heart in some fashion on the inhale. And exhale, come back through to downward facing dog. Let's take the right leg up and back this time. We'll just mix it up a little bit here. So open up the hip and bend the knee. Let the right heel track towards the left seat and hug the left inner thigh to center as you press energetically through both palms. You can circle the ankle on that right side a few times. Good, and then level out the hips again. Right leg reaches back. Right knee to nose. Stepping the right foot up. This time we'll keep the back knee lifted. If you're okay to bring the back heel down and keep the heels uh, separated so we're not on a tight rope, then you can enter the pose that way. We're going for a warrior one. Or you can stay up on the back heel. Just depends on your hips. Hug the right hip in and reach the arms back. Let's take the right thumb to the right hip crease and reach the left arm forward. It's gonna uh, encourage us to find the strength of our legs and the core lift so we're not leaning so much into the right foot. Really press the left foot. And then we'll take it up into warrior one. You might need to adjust once you get up here. Any position with the arms so you can square the hips forward and then find the depth of your warrior one. Notice the pace of the breath. It might speed up a little bit. To come out of this posture, we'll come high on the back heel and bring the hands down. We'll step back to downward dog. And you can take a couple breaths there or you can shift through a flow coming to plank, tapping the knees and lowering. The flow is in the breath, cobra. So even if you're in a static posture, this is still a flow. Let's bring the big toes together from downward facing dog when you get there. And stretch the left leg up and back. This time, open up the hip and bend the knee, reaching the left knee to the ceiling and maybe just a few circles or flexes through that left ankle. And square the hips again. You can bend the right knee quite a bit to get that. Draw the left knee to the nose and look forward to step up into low lunge. High on the back heel or bring the heel down as best you can to square the hips to the floor. Left thumb in the left hip crease, ground the outer right foot, lots of energy there. 
Right leg straight, reach forward with the right arm. Start to draw forward and up. And then set your lunge, set your arm position. And just be here for three breaths. Spending a little extra time so you can really feel what it's, the effort that it is not to abandon this body right here. When we're coming out of the pose, high on the back heel, inhale. Hands come down, exhale. Again, stepping back, downward dog or child's pose, or take it through the flow to plank, to lower, to find a back bend. Let's meet in a child's pose. Just take three breaths there to come back together. Body, heart, mind. Let's meet in downward facing dog. High on the tiptoes, inhale. Walking towards the front, exhale. And come up halfway, breathing in. And fold over the legs, let it go. Let's drop it into that seat on the inhale, coming up, Utkatasana. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, release the arms. Let's give it a little bounce and a shake. Let's let it go. Really loose jiggles. Something that feels good. Throwing some things away. Ah, some exhales. It's warm in my space. And then we'll do a hip opening balance. So you can use um, a wall, a desk, a chair, anything that you have in your room if you're feeling um, at all wobbly. Let's, let's just start before we do that to work a little with the balance, just to lift the heels and then lower the heels and just see what happens. It's not a problem to feel a lot of wobbles. It's just so good for the brain too. All of our, all of our stabilizer muscles. Woo. Yeah. And so lift and lower a couple of times. You might see what's helpful. Don't need to come up too high. So that gives our feet a little bit of uh, information of where we're going here. Uh, we're gonna have the left leg be our strong standing leg. It's gonna be the right ankle crossing above the left knee. So grab for something. Then this can be just a nice deep stretch for the outer right hip. In which case you may wanna just hold on to the wall or chair. And basically we are coming into that sort of squat. It's coming down to where it feels like a chair pose with the left leg. You wanna lift a little bit in the right hip. Just feel that energetically, that hip is lifting. You can come down as far as you like. It's gonna deepen the stretch a little bit, but if you're feeling uh, uh, anything in the knee, then just keep it up for three, two, and one. Let's come out of the pose and try to hug the right knee in and then release it down. I'm in a room that's got a lot of carpeting, so that just adds some extra challenge. Another shake. <sighs> Second side, and look at your right foot. Feel the muscles engage in the right glutes and just get light on the left toes. Just light lifting the heel. And then across of the ankle, flex the foot and then start to sit. You can come in and out of the pose or use the support just to get into the hip. Lifting the left hip energetically, even if you're pressing down a little bit with your left palm. If you have blocks and you go deeper in this practice on your own, then the blocks can be in front and your hands can be on those too. Just a few more breaths here. 
Cinching the drawstring at the waist. One more inhale. Exhale to exit. Hug the left thigh in and release and come back. Let's vinyasa through, inhale and fold, exhale. Halfway lengthen, breathing in. Bend the knees. Let's just step right back, downward facing dog. Taking the big toes together again and stretching the right leg back. Opening up the hip, bending the knee. One breath cycle there, inhale. And exhale, straighten and square the hips. Draw the right knee to the nose. Let's step the right foot up again. Take a breath in that low lunge. And pivot the back heel to the floor, coming up through warrior one. Inhale. Exhale, open it up into warrior two now. So we'll just add on, taking perhaps the legs a little bit wider. And looking out over the right fingertips, drawing your tailbone long, trying to find the, the center between your legs and still with that back foot. And breathing here through it all. We'll move the warrior two, so straighten the front leg and inhale. Just do a big circle or a flip out of the arms. We'll do that a couple times. You can just let the arms, the elbows crisscross in front. Inhale and then exhale to the lunge. Inhale. Exhale. Let's do right elbow under left and then hold there. Right elbow under left. Moving the elbows a little towards the left as you look over the right shoulder. Filling in the upper back. Inhale. And exhale, keep the bend in the front knee. Let your right elbow come to the thigh or if you use blocks or can reach to the floor, you can do that here as well on the inside of the right foot for side angle pose. Shoulders may be tight, you can rest your hand at your hip or low back on the left side or reach the left arm up for three, maybe forward for two. And one, straighten front leg, reverse Trikonasana, inhale. And exhale, let's square the hips up to face the side. So legs comfortable distance apart. So open up into that cactus shape. Inhale, take the right elbow again underneath the left elbow, lift the elbows, thumbs towards the forehead and then fold over the legs. Let's find that core lift again, just coming about halfway. And then lower down, but keep the elbows moving forward. You can nestle your chin in there. Tractioning out the spine. Release the arms, crawl the left fingers forward. Tuck the right arm under to go for the right shin. A little bit like that twist we did when we were down at the beginning, the threading the needle. Letting your head just dangle as your gaze is towards the left. One more breath. Both hands come forward on the inhale. And then walk towards the right, pivot the right toes, low lunge here. Downward facing dog to rest, child's pose, or take it through a flow on the inhale, forward to plank. And on the exhale to lower. Heart opening, inhale. Exhale, we'll meet for three more breaths and a resting shape. It's one, two, and three from downward facing dog. We'll travel to the front. Halfway lengthen. And fold, exhale. Inhale to come up. And exhale to pause and take in what it is to be standing again. Second side, reach the arms up, inhale. And fold, exhale. Halfway lengthen. 
We'll bend the knees. We'll just step it right to downward facing dog. We'll bring the big toes together. So this time the left leg reaches back and then open, letting the heel heavy. The inhale straightens the leg out again. Exhale, we're stepping forward to lunge. Just take a breath in the low lunge. And then pivot the back heel, coming up through warrior. If that's okay for the hips, otherwise just stay high. Couple breaths there. And then opening it up to warrior two. Adjust your feet comfortably wide. Inner left thigh, lengthening away from the right heel. And the right foot is key. Strong straightening the back leg. Let's flip the palms up as we breathe in and palms down, breathe out. Inhale and exhale. Flying warrior now, straighten both legs and then just flip the arms here. So just spinning the elbows, we're weaving them one underneath the other. Straightening and then bending the front leg, staying though with the back foot. So keeping the spine in the center of the legs. This time we're gonna come into the lunge and left elbow under right elbow. Just moving the, the shoulders to square over the hips. Looking over the left shoulder for three, two, and one. Release the arm side angle pose with the elbow, light elbow or reach for the your shin or the floor block. Choose where the right arm wants to be on the hip or wrapping around to the left hip crease. Allowing the body to be embodied by this breath now. Let's reach it up. Straighten the front leg, reverse Trikonasana, inhale. And exhale through center, parallel the feet. Let's have the heels come in and drop into squat. Guiding the hands to lengthen the, through the inner knees, drop the left shoulder, exhale. And inhale, center and right, switching. Inhale, center. Let's take the arms into a cactus shape for three, two, and one. Straighten the legs, parallel the feet, left elbow under right elbow, lift. Fold halfway and pause. You can adjust the legs to be a little closer together if that's better for this next phase. Reaching the elbows forward and then Let's release the arms and take the left hand to the right shin, right fingers crawl forward. Lift the left hip up a little bit just to keep things more on the square side. There's no right or wrong, but different way the stretch and the breath moves through the thoracic rib cage. Good. The inhale brings both hands forward and then start to pivot the left toes towards the top of your mat as you move through to a downward dog, last optional vinyasa, if you'd like to take it through or just come to child's folks. Let's meet in child's folks. Taking in the landscape now. Sometimes it feels nice to, uh, if you're okay to have your forehead on the floor, tuck the backs of the hands underneath or behind your knees between your hamstrings and your calves and sit back again, let the elbows just flop wide, get a, a stretch of the hands. Or you can just have the hands reaching down towards the bottom of your mat and backs of the hands on the floor and make a fist. Good, we'll shift forward onto the tummy. And um, 
if you have a hard floor beside you, then you might want to change your position on the mat so that you're facing sideways so that we can uh, comfortably try. So be a, or be a little more to the right side of your mat and slide your left knee out so that it's uh, parallel with your hip. You can flex your left foot. You're going to feel a little left in the uh, lift in the left hip flexor. You can have your forehead palm on palm there, or you can come into a version of Sphinx pose with the elbows underneath the shoulders. So keep reaching the, the left knee away from yourself and dropping the outer left hip for three. Two, nothing to do in the upper body. Mm, one. And slide the left leg in. Give your hips a little shake. Wiggle towards the left side of your mat. See about sliding the right knee out from your hip. And your right shin is parallel uh, or perpendicular to your left thigh. Walking the left knee, or sorry, the right knee away a little bit. You can be forehead down or you can have yourself up a little more upright, but drop the outer right hip. Sound of the breath here. Good, and then lower, slide the leg in, another shake. Kick the feet a bit, windshield wiper, in and out, in and out with the heels. And slide the hands back, let's press up. And take it onto the seat. So you could use here your, uh, your blanket just to give yourself a bit of height if you tend to have compression in the lower back. We'll let the legs go wide and come up onto the fingertips. They don't have to be super wide. Just taking a uh, more passive wide leg forward hold with the hands behind or walking the hands forward to pull the ground back or if your arms are long and want to reach outside the shins, ankles or for the big toes. Slowing it right down. Draw the chest through and inhale to come up. To bring the little le le uh, legs a little closer together. And give them a shake. This is one that I've been liking is just to keep the legs long. Move back a bit. Just keep the legs long and wide. And then take the hands over towards the uh, left. And you can let your right hip kind of rock forward. Just let your feet be floppy, twisting to the left. And then through center, spin around, hands over towards the right, and looking over the right shoulder. Sometimes we do this with bent knees, but just try it with the floppy legs. One more time, over on the left. And then over on the right. And then through center. And so just before we come onto our backs, if you would like to continue with a bit of the heart opening, you could take your blanket, towel if you have that, just make a little roll. You can have that off to the side um, for now and just it'll, it'll come underneath the shoulder blades. And if you don't want that for Shavasana, that's fine. You can just be flopped out. Let's do one more thing here before we settle, just a, a bit of work on the boat pose on some core. So there's a, a bit of flexion in the lower back, but the thoracic spine. So it's a cow in the thoracic and then some cat in the lower. And you can be here with your feet on the floor, maybe just on your tippy toes. Or you can lift one leg. Just a centimeter or two, take a walk. 
if you have this in your practice and you're strong in your back and your core to lift both legs up. So if you feel your hip flexors start to take over, mine always do. And just hold behind the thighs. Otherwise you can release your arms forward. Three, two, and one, bring the feet down. Hug the heels in, hug your shins and take a seated child's pose, exhale. Good, so from here, if you'd like, we're coming down to rest and the blanket roll or towel, as long as the head's not falling right back, you could put a block under your head, but if you catch the bottom of the bra line and hold your head, if it's not too high, you might uh, just experience a really nice opening across the chest and you maybe tip the legs wide and the arms wide so you feel like you're just melting out, taking up some space. Taking in the experience as it is right now as you Begin to exit the movement, the flow of your practice in terms of the movement and just allow the flow to be in the breath, just the natural rising and falling of the rib cage. If that's a helpful place for your attention to rest, you can. or just on the entirety of the body in this shape, resting and digesting. The gift of gratitude to all the organs and muscles and brain power that we easily take for granted. Thank you. If you have the desire and the willingness to continue in the resting shape, please do that. If it's time for you to close your practice and take the practice off the mat, then take a moment to reorient to your space with a little bit of movement, jaw rolling, tongue around the teeth, A stretch if you feel like it. Bending the knees and rolling to one side. Taking the recovery pose there. Pressing up to seat and to seal your practice. Letting the hands rest in the lap or at the heart center and taking a moment to let the body settle and experience. Be conscious of this shape of sitting. The calmer nervous system, whether you feel calm or not, is not the, the goal. Time and practice, slow, shallow breath. A wish for all beings to be well, to be safe, to be happy. Namaste, thank you for your practice. Thanks ladies.
I hope I'll be, I'm just going to pause the recording.